welcome back to the next part of the session. In the previous part of the session we have come across covering of the different concepts in environmental studies. Mainly we have come across the concept of ecological system what we call it as an ecosystem how the different types of ecosystems they tend to strive in majorly we have come across the producers where the energy is being captured by the plants or maybe any of the greenery they have been called it as a autotroph heterotrophs they either depend upon the other things Next we call it as a saprophytic as well as a parasitic in nature, parasite means the organisms which have been living inside the host that we call it as a parasite. And in addition to this we also come across the utilization of the ecological pyramids. What are those we will be explaining in the next sort of the classes. The next important thing that we come across is related to the producers. So, plants are the producers. Next we come across as a consumers. After the consumers we come across the decomposers mainly the bacteria or the dead and the decayed part sorry the dead part of the plants or maybe the animals are to be decayed by the bacteria and further it is utilized by the fungi. This decaying process also involves some of the invertebrates also, some of the worms and all they go for feeding up of the flesh or maybe any other fragmented components. So that kind of a matter majorly consists of in carbon as well as in hydrogen. Eventually it has been released back into the cycle through the biogeochemical mechanism. Now in today's class let us get to learn about the ecosystem mainly the forest ecosystem, grassland ecosystem, desert ecosystem as well as aquatic ecosystem. What do you mean by the term the forest ecosystem? The term forest here majorly refers to the presence of the dense growth of the trees as well as the plants which are a home for birds, animals, insects and it is also serving as a base of the ecosystem because it also contains different sort of the forest categorization where we call it as a woodland ecosystem uh, maybe the forest boreal and frequently flooded system one which has been in uh, completely in a dry condition semi moist condition and completely which is in the presence of the water that we call it as a frequently flooded system. So this frequently flooded system is also been another categorized part where you can see the dense tall growth of the trees and all where roots will be applied to the earth and here whatever the river water or maybe any other things or maybe a lake itself only what happens during the rainy season what happens the flood amount of water it gushes through the forest and therefore causing slight submergence not complete submergence it is a partial submergence still where above the root level that we call it as a frequently flooded system and manually if you are going to conserve the forest it requires a lot of time for the growth therefore here the woodland eco forest system mainly comprises of the foremost layer and majorly we go for the classification in the form of canopy, understory and then ground layer and forest floor. Canopy means first most layer of the part of the ecosystem and mainly it reaches with respect to the oak or maybe the pine type of the woodlands that is the one thing. Next if you are going to come across in the case of the understory type of the ecosystem for a consideration, here you come across for the next second part of the layer besides the can and seeding layers. That is the important part 
and next whatever the grass is and all you come across we call it as a ground layer. Not completely grass because we have a special ecosystem for that. Forest humus means the dead and decayed part when it is being complete degraded that remaining part contains some fertile or maybe an essence of a mineral or the organic or maybe any mineral matter content that we call it as a forest floor above that you come across the ground layer the deep beneath in this which has been happening it is also home for an insect ground layer next understory the beneath portion of the next is the canopy the tall portions that you come across so these are the components of the forest ecosystem now next important thing it is what are the different categories that we come across in an ecosystem okay mainly here if you're going to take the forest ecosystem they have the horizontal structures what are those horizontal structures they are mainly comprising of a environmental gradients what are those environmental gradients namely we shall go through it one please do observe the following picture and then let me explain the content. What are those environmental gradients? They are nothing but the attributes contributing to this either it may be the presence of the type of the soil moisture content the factors which has been affecting the growth of the plants namely with respect to the fertility presence of the minerals or even the transportation of the water that means nothing but the moisture content and then slope of the ground or maybe the topographical features is the major component of environmental gradients next gaps in the canopy gaps in the canopy mainly refers to the old age or maybe a tree is being affected by any sorts of an diseases that part of the disease means when it has been affected by any sorts of an infects uh, sorry the infectious organisms or through the insects leading to the diseases in the plant you can observe it or even the microbes also seed availability is a one thing next large clearings means it is created due to the widespread of the infections and all or maybe diseases which tends to cause the death of an organisms remember the term here whatever the ecosystem it has its own phase of the cycle first one is the creation phase next is the sustenance phase next thing it is reaching to the saturation that means phase of an endogenous decay complete destruction that means taking place means it is again recreation process takes place that means the cyclic order or the process are taking place in this part of an ecosystem especially in the forest ecosystem now coming on to the next part it is what are the influences as i have stated soil topography of the ground as well as moisture and drainage soil topography as well as moisture and drainage soil topography moisture and drainage content soil which kind of the soil clay silt loam or maybe a sandy nature we call it as even the gravel also topography of the ground whether they have been present in the low lying area the forest has been uh, uh, covered up and it has been growing up or maybe in a hilly regional area whatever the hilly regional area if you're going to see in the case of uh, bandipur forest and all or maybe nagarhole all these things they are lying towards the, the Shumoga if you are going to take it you have a reserve forest also there 
the, that is residing in slightly lower elevation when compared to that of the Bandipur or Nagarhole also. Thereby topography is also one of the important thing. Next moisture and the drainage, see drainage means flow of the water. Whatever the water is being coming across from the Bhagamandala, especially the Kaveri river originates from there due to the hydrological cycle, a part where the runoff takes place, that runoff portion where the flowing of those water constitutes a stream, that stream portion which will be joining together, we call it as a main part of the drainage system. That flow is also an important factor affecting for the growth of the plants or trees or the forest. Moisture content, obviously it is an important aspect. We come across a evapotranspiration process as well as transpiration process. Transpiration means excess of the water which has been stored in terms of and plants and all, they have been expelled out that we call it as in transpiration. Evapotranspiration means process where whatever the tree or maybe the plant which containing the excess of water in the form of the bubbles, they have been evaporated. That kind of the thing we call it as evapotranspiration. Now, next another concern is forest ecosystem process. In the forest ecosystem process, obviously, whatever the related species, maybe a wild animals, insects or maybe starting from if you have a birds also, you may have even the reptile content, mammalian as well as even the birds also, the amphibians also. So these are the species, they have a dominant or maybe ecological succession we are going to call it as. Based upon this, we have the type of a forest ecosystem process also comprises of mainly even the biomass productivity. Next, functions of an ecosystem of what? Forest ecosystem. Forest is a home for many plants and animals. Conservation is very much necessary. So, if the forests are not conserved, we call it as a resource area, where if you wanted to go for extraction of the mines and all, therefore you need to take the environmental clearances. If you need to take the environmental clearances, whether it is possible to give the clearance or not is mainly decided by considering all the studies and all. Simply they will not go for giving it. But in other sense to say that some of the people are who are much more uh, dominant in nature, they manipulate it and give the areas so that they are going to get the clearances. That we call it as a ma manipulation as well as even the miscommunication aspects that you are going to come across. Care has to be taken with respect to this regard. Another most important thing it is, if you are going to take the hydrological cycle, mainly it consists of, let me give an example, sun, so you have the clouds and all, the forest coverage. So we call it as a precipitation, we call it as the fall uh, which is going on, we call it as a runoff. The water which has been percolating through the soil, we call it as an infiltration. And the water which has been coming across, even the after the percolation which has been moving inside the ground, we call it as a ground water or we call it as a base flow and this surface runoff we call it as a streams which have been retained over the larger part of the basin. So again the evaporation takes place due to the heat then evaporation it will leading to the formation of the clouds we call it as a condensation. From the condensation what happens, the next phase it is due to the movement of the wind, it precipitates. This part of the fall we call it as a vegetative runoff and through fall also we call it as, they are quite important. Mainly 
the advantages of this forest ecosystem is export or maybe we call it as the exchange of the gases the exchange of the gases in the sense what kind of the exchange of the gases due to the transport mechanism transport mechanism this transport mechanism is the driving factor is the driving factor transport mechanism is the driving factor which has been leading to the exchange of the gases which is a part of the biogeochemical cycles carbon dioxide absorption taking place oxygen emission is also been taking place see the rate of the mass balance that we come across similarly in the case of the whatever the water which has been evaporated what happens the through fall so it is also solely responsible for again continuing part of an hydrological cycle so this will be leading to the conservation of the lands and all if you take an example a case study of the whole madikeri region or maybe in a kodagu region why there is a landslides that has been caused and what is the reason for it because damage to the ecological system has rendered the disruption in the transport mechanisms the transport mechanism either through the flow of the air or even through the flow of the water it is being carried out so flow of the water constitutes the dissolution of the minerals these minerals which in, in turn if it is been reaching through the ground for the different surfaces what happens it is been rejuvenated and the plants or the trees tend to grow more this is the whole part of understanding the forest ecosystem we have a medicinal importance value and it is also forest is also utilized for making the pulp and paper wood mainly for the construction purpose all these things are utilized so therefore conservation is a another important issues what are those it will be a part of assignment for you people how do you go for conservation of the forest not just an essay type of the writing what are the forest conservation act please to read that and then get it back okay now we got we call it as a grassland ecosystem marginal rainfall grassland the term it always indicates where huge amount of the grasses or like that kind of similar species are grown across the given arid regions that is an important part meanwhile another essential thing if we go for taking in the grassland ecosystem what is the area where the rainfall has been received same thing forest okay fine what about in the case of the grassland ecosystem we have three different tropical as well as uh, temperate grag grasslands temperate grassland and then we have a tropical grassland tropical means our country temperate mainly due to the temperature areas and then we have a desert grassland so 4 in 0.6 into 10 to the power of 7 meter square i think uh 7 in terms of in kilometer square the earth surface where the grassland which receives a rainfall because the area will be more no for that so if the rainfall condition if it is in the rain next if you take in the case of the tropical uh, type of the grassland obviously the amount it accounts for 150 cm of the annual precipitation 150 cm of the annual precipitation the 
this particular process we call it as the annual precipitation especially for the grassland 150 again with the range of 25 to 45 we call it as a desert and grassland 25 to 45 centimeter of the rainfall why what is the reason because temperature will be higher in that particular region or an area you know from the moderate to the low conditions here you can see it is a hot region it is semi or maybe a cold regions also the type of the grassland we call it as temperate grassland take in the case of the some portions of the regions of the Kashmir region we have it temperate grassland even in the northeastern part of an India states and then tropical grassland whatever you are going to see in and around in the southern regions near to the western Ghats and all we have a tropical grassland desert grassland obviously you can see a best example is Rajasthan land type of an ecosystem ok in this grassland type of an ecosystem what are the organisms they try to exist obviously herbivorous carnivorous will be especially in the case of the insect only because insect food chain and food web are quietly different from that of the higher order of the organisms meanwhile in nature they are completely fertile in nature what is the other uh, important aspect that you are going to learn especially in the case of the ecosystem we come across highly fertile soil and they are subjected to higher temperature and greater evaporation content so the temperature is a major factor as well as the evaporation we have one equation call it as a water budget equation when the evaporation content and precipitation infiltration and then runoff everything is being taken into consideration we call it as a input minus output is equal to what is the flow rate condition that changes can be determined through this grassland ecosystem also another important aspect what are the usages of the grassland type of an ecosystem no cuttings can be done uh, like in the case of the forest grassland it can be converted into even an agricultural land also so that is where the natural resources are being utilized where we come across the temperate grasslands and all or maybe a desert grassland if any of the resources are being situated then the clearance can be given but not in a uh, completely a green belt region that is quietly different and it affects the ecological tourism also next uh, thing it is what are the components you have producers are the grass itself only and then consumers it is nothing but the herbivores as well as the large omnivores and carnivores also these are we call it as macro invertebrates macro invertebrates then from the producers consumers from the consumers the decomposers whatever the decomposers we call it as they mainly come across for considering the degradation part of both the producers as well as the consumers part okay this complete portion of an ecological cycle it mainly consists of an bacteria and then fungi as well as even some of the microorganisms this detritus part is again recycled back into the portion of the soil as well as the exchange of the gases in the atmosphere this kind of the ecosystem we call it as a grassland type of an ecosystem where the soil is fertile in nature and mainly they are being 
classified into temperate, tropical and desert grassland type of the grassland ecosystem. There is a one reason what is the major problem that is arising is erosion of soil, natural erosion takes place. That is the one thing because what happens due to the movement of the wind and all the extreme portion of the wind acts and takes away the soil portion the top portion of the soil is eroded away that we call it as an soil erosion. Care has to be taken in related to the grassland type of an ecosystem. Next we shall come across for the desert ecosystem similarly related to the desert grassland where the quality of the sand or maybe the it is completely devoid of the presence of the plants and all a cactus or maybe any other uh, pine type of the trees as well as a palm trees can be grown in that particular region not all the plants that can be grown in that complete region or desertification in this particular type of a desert ecosystem carnivores as well as the omnivores are also present and they are majorly accepting or what we call it as they are not susceptible they are dominant even in adjusting the environmental conditions in the top or maybe we call it as a hot type of the climatic regions. Rajasthan is the best example only a portion of an uh, water you can see like in the form of an oasis. Next coming on to the aquatic ecosystem this is uh, one of the important thing which uh, we go for referring it up major causes of the aquatic ecosystem. The term aquatic as I have told that interaction of the living organs, organisms which are being present in the case of the water. So what are living organisms it means what happens either I can take it as a plant or maybe the uh, any animals they are maybe uh, macrophytes we call it as the growth of the plants over the surface itself only and there is a certain weeds and all that is being grown hyacinth plant these are the examples you can see that uh, some of the plants are also grown in the presence of the wastewater regions and some of the algae you can see it these are called as an phytoplanktons phytoplanktons again sun is the driving source of an energy there is an exchange of the gases okay there will be oxygen fixation sometimes there will be a carbon dioxide emission mainly by the presence of some of the organisms which are present at the bottom uh, the dead and decayed part obviously what to do it is through the decomposes that kind of an organisms we call it as benthic organisms The fishes which are being present or maybe any other sorts of micro insects which are being uh, present there itself only. These are called as in consumers, consumers, one is a primary consumer so it will be getting by feeded by some of the invertebrates and this in turn get eaten up by the fish okay similarly the dead and decayed portion of the fish or maybe invertebrates again they strive and decomposes together this kind of an organisms which are being present when they settle at the bottom we call it as a the derivation of the term we call it as a benthic organisms. So aquatic system plays a very important role we call it as a macrophytic plants also and there are saprophytes and even the fungi also plays a very important role. We have an uh, lichens or maybe a crabs also they are also present in here and small micro invertebrates are also present which are living both in the water as well as even in the case of the outside 
on the land. This kind of an organisms, if you take phytoplanktons, is being consumed here. Then again, it is in turn consumed by the fish. And completely upon the death of this organisms and all, what happens? They go for decompose by the bacteria. Why this role is essential? Because if excess of any of the nitrate or maybe the phosphate has been released, what happens? The growth of the plants starts. And what happens? Whatever the oxygen that has been present inside, okay, due to the natural atmospheric fixation will not be tend to be more in nature, it will be decreasing in nature. Presence of the huge amount of the dead or maybe the decayed part of the organisms, it tend to results in the formation of the decreasing in the oxygen content. Therefore, the decrease in the oxygen content leads to the imbalance in the ecosystem itself only. Not only affects even the animals also, uh, even whatever the organisms that are there, they either tend to grow much more and become much more dominant. For example, a lake, if we, it is called as a fresh water lake, that means the growth of the plants are not there. It is only to the minimum, only the animals or maybe cases of the aquatic animals are being present. If the growth has been uh, nominal in nature, then we call it as an oligotrophic type of the ecosystem. Whatever the growth of the algae, maybe on the surface of the rocks and all, you can see the patches of the algae that is being grown. Still it is tend to surviving. Some plants are also being grown. We call it as an emergent type of an macrophytes. They tend to uh, be spreading at a faster rate and the growth is also much more faster, thereby blocking the flow and therefore causing the disruption also. Only few organisms survive, not all the organisms tends to survive. That we call it as an oxygen depletion part. So mainly whatever you take, there is an exchange of the carbon dioxide as well as the oxygen. In here, the transport mechanisms that is being taking place, we call it as the mineral transport mechanism. Mineral transport mechanism. Mineral transport mechanisms. So therefore, uh, in aquatic ecosystem, if you take in the case of the river or maybe in the case of a lake or even the pond, in a given area such that it has to be completely balanced in nature. Any of the, if the animal growth has been completely more, it is not sustainable. If plant growth is also uh, completely more, it is not sustainable. Flora as well as the fauna interaction, they have to be maintained in an equilibrium aspect. As well as even the organisms, the decomposers, as well as even the phytoplanktons also, they have to be maintained. So I told it as a macro consumers like a fish, micro consumers like a small, small part of an insects which have been living in the water. What are those? Please try to get the names of it. That is your second part of the task for this session. And mainly, first trophic level, we call it as phytoplanktons. Call it, it occupies the first trophic level. Because they are the bapoda, we call it as arthropoda as well as the beetles, they form the second trophic level. These are all the second trophic level. Third trophic level, what are those? We call it as third trophic level. Sunlight is also plays a very important role. Huge amount of the organisms, if they go for developing it, so therefore it also inhibits some of the growth of the microorganisms which are susceptible for the nature of the sunlight. Next thing it is, the water contains lesser temperature. During the hot season, what happens? Surface level of the water gets heated up more quickly than in the rainy or maybe in the winter season. 
thereby leading to this as I earlier have stated dissolved oxygen content mineral content carbon or maybe in the form of the carbon dioxide as well as even the pH is also an important criteria so it has to be in a neutral not an acidic nor an uh, alkaline condition next important thing it is the nutrient factors we call it as a nitrogen which is an um, one of the important part where it is present 78 percent is being present in the atmosphere as well as whatever the dissolution containing either in the microorganisms or in the plants that is an important thing as well as even the phosphorus okay so these are the major factors we call it as a chemical environmental factors that affects the aquatic type of an ecosystem so with this we have completed the different types of an ecosystem that we have come across we also have a marine ecosystem where completely the marine organs that means the sea organisms same thing it is they also we have the sea weeds or maybe the sea planktons or algae and then finally they come across the small micro invertebrates small vertebrate species larger maybe tertiary means we call it as even more than that because they are carnivorous in nature so therefore animals which go off for feeding the fish and all example dolphin or maybe the whales or again even in the sharks and all they are completely carnivorous in nature so likewise we have an example even for the marine ecosystems so with this i'll be going to complete the first major part of an ecosystem in the model number one in the next class we shall meet up with another set of the topic still then stay tuned remember whatever the concept i have stated the application part will be given in the form of multiple choice questions so that you people need to analyze it okay stay tuned for it and thank you one and all